Sri Lankans are casting their ballots in a snap general election. Now, the polls will determine whether the island nation wants to further empower its new president, Anura Kumara the Sanayake. The Sanayake seeks to secure a majority in the parliament to push his policies as Sri Lanka struggles to recover from a crushing financial crisis. Now, voting began at 7 a.m. local time and will end at 4 p.m., with counting scheduled to start shortly after. In the latest, the Commissioner General of Elections has said that the first election results will be released by 10 p.m. today, and the final results are expected by Friday evening. Now, there are 225 parliamentary seats on the ballot. 17 million voters of the island nation will be exercising their right on Thursday, with over 8,800 candidates contesting in the election. Now, the parliamentary election process has certain special provisions to it. Of the total 225 seats in the parliament, Sri Lankans vote directly for 196 seats. For the remaining 29, political parties elect lawmakers on the basis of national vote percentage of every party. Now, just days after his incident, this NIK had dissolved the parliament on September 24th to clear the way for general election. The parliament's five-year term was due to end in August of 2025, but the polls seemed necessary for this NIK's National People pa People's Power Party, as the NPP currently has just three lawmakers in the outgoing parliament, as per the 2020 mandate. Now, the president hopes for a fresh mandate that he needs to push his policies. His main challenger is Sajid Premadasa's SJB, which currently holds 54 seats. Now, this time, several big faces have stepped away from the spotlight. Ranil Vikramasinghe, who lost the presidential elections to Anura Kumara Desanayake, will not be contesting an election for the first time since 1977. The Rajapaksha brothers... Mahinda and Gotabaya Rajapaksha, who were ousted from power after the 2020 economic crisis, are also not participating in the electoral contest. We are now being joined by our correspondent, Dasuni Athauda, and she's joining us from Colombo. Uh, Dasuni, give us the latest ground details that you're picking up from around you. Well, I'm outside uh, the polling station, which is here in Colombo, the Colombo University uh, premises. And uh, like you were wondering, over the past few hours, it is quite visible that the voter turnout is actually lower than what is expected for this time around in this election in comparison to that turnout uh, of the presidential election, which we witnessed a few months ago. Because as per statistics issued, uh, we can see that as of right now, in many electoral districts and areas, the voter turnout is still well below that 30% mark. So that is something uh, new in comparison to the previous presidential poll. This might be due to various factors, including that of general public disinterest, as well as a voter fatigue. Regardless, there are still voters who are coming in to cast their votes. So they do have a few more hours to go before we get that final count on what the total voter percentage is for this election. Thank you, Dasani. We will keep coming back to you for more updates on Election Day from Sri Lanka. Also, we are now being joined by Kusul Pereira from Bilan Villa. He is a writer and a journalist. Welcome to the show, uh, Kusul. Thank you so much for joining us. As our correspondent was telling us that the voter turnout so far is relatively lower than the previous times, what do you attribute this to, considering that these are landmark elections, very crucial for the country, given the financial crisis that Sri Lanka is currently facing? Well, this was seen during the last week or so with uh, a very mild response to all the campaigns, people not taking much interest. And you want to know what the reasons are. The reasons are many. One basic factor is from 4.5% to 42% leap was a dramatic leap. Uh, by the NPP, by Andhra Kumara, and that massive growth in their polling are floating votes. And most of them voted 
quota bill in 2019. So these floating votes actually expected a drastic change in governance within 24 hours. They, this is what they were in fact told during the presidential campaign. So they said this is a new group, a disciplined group, a hardworking group. They would immediately get into business as soon as they are voted in. But sadly, it's not happening. So over the weeks, people tended to feel that what they expect is not what is being delivered. Mm. And now it came to a situation where they said, well, two thirds is too much for this government to hold them in check. I think uh, a normal majority would do. And I think the JVP, the NPP also has failed it because they started by saying that the 2020, 225 parliament should be packed with NPP. Then they came down to say that we are going to have a two-thirds majority. And now they claim political power without saying what their majority would be. So all that gathered together, collected together, has sort of uh, left the people uncertain whether they should go to vote or not. So I'm expecting something like 70% or around 70% polling a drop. Uh, from 78% that was there during the presidential elections. Right. Uh, Mr. Pereira, what bearing will this have on the election result, A? And the second part of my question is, for the sake of our international viewers, could you explain the significance of these lap, uh, snap elections in Sri Lanka? Well, I mean, you said this in the introduction to Sri Lankan situation context here, that uh, once Anur Kumar Disanayaka from NPP was elected president. He needed a parliament and a government with a majority for him to run the country and the affairs of the country. The parliament that was there and that was used by President Vikramasinghe, who came as a standby president, was the Rajapaksa parliament majority. So obviously, that was a conflict of interest if they went together. He wouldn't be able to do what he wants and he would not be allowed to do anything other than what the Rajapaksas want. So there was no other option. He had to dissolve parliament and go for a new parliamentary election and have a government of his own. So that is where we are and the question is, whether he would be able to form a government by the NPP. I said, yes, they would be able to do it, but it would not be a massive majority. It would not be a tremendous increase in voting mm. for the NPP. The drop in total polling would affect them as well. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kusal Pereira for joining us with your insights on the broadcast today.